welcomed delegation to make brief visit to Grenada to discuss ICT with the Prime Minister on Wednesday. Details to this story and more coming up in the National Report. Welcome back with the details to the news for Tuesday, September 11th. I am Wendy Edmonds. A high-level CARICOM delegation will be in Grenada on Wednesday to update Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell on matters relating to ICT. During the weekly post-cabinet briefing, Senator Norlin Cox, Minister for Youth Development, Sports, Culture and the Arts, said the meeting will also focus on the single ICT space. One of the initiatives that CARICOM is looking at is having uh, ICT as a single space where we can collaborate in terms of information, uh, looking at CARICOM probably having a repository so that other countries, government countries, can access critical uh, data using ICT. This uh, meeting to tomorrow is uh, leading up to the meeting of ministers of ICT, which will be announced at a, at a later date. So this is a very important development for us, and uh, we hope uh, that this initiative is one that will be a fruit, not just for Grenada, but for the region as a whole. Following the meeting, a press conference will be held in the Cabinet Conference Room on Wednesday. The resource persons are Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, who is lead head with responsibility for science and technology, including ICT in the CARICOM Quasi-Cabinet, CARICOM's Assistant Secretary General for Trade and Economic Integration, Mr. Joseph Cox, and CARICOM's Deputy Program Manager, ICT for Development, Ms. Jennifer Britton. It's been described as the biggest England tour for 10 years and the biggest tour to the West Indies by any team in the foreseeable future and Grenada is getting its share of the pie. Early next year, England will play three tests, five one-day internationals, two of which will be held in Grenada, and three 2020 matches. Grenada will host its one-day matches on February 25th and 27th of 2019. During Tuesday's weekly government post-cabinet briefing facilitated by Sports Minister Senator Nolan Cox, there was a representation from Cricket West Indies senior team manager, Grenadian Raw Lewis, former West Indies fast bowler Ambassador Joel Garner, along with Cricket West Indies Communications and Marketing Officer Dominic Warren. Warren says it will be a very exciting few months ahead for Cricket West Indies and the government and people of Grenada. In the context, what's exciting about this tour, it's probably the biggest English, England tour there's been for 10 years. And in terms of the West Indies, we know that uh, an England tour is a huge piece, both in terms of profile, but also economic impact as well. Not least driving interest in the game and hopefully driving young people to get inspired by West Indies performances. Um, it's probably gonna be the biggest tour to the West Indies by any team for the foreseeable future as well, because the ICC is putting together a World Test Championship schedule. So the fact that there are three test matches, five ODIs of which there are two in Grenada, and then three T20s, the likes of which we might not see for the, another five, six, seven years. We just do not know. So uh, coming back to Grenada specifically and the two ODIs, again, where it gets very interesting, um, let's t talk on the schedule first and who we're playing England as world number ones currently um, in a World Cup year, which is going to be in, in, in May, June. Massive preparation for us, probably the biggest test in cricket right now for the team to play against England. Manager of the West Indies senior cricket team, Grenadian Raw Lewis, says he is excited about the two one-day matches at the Grenada Cricket Stadium after playing cricket there for a number of years. I don't know yet how I would feel walking into the stadium with that maroon blazer uh, come the 25th uh, to sit on the balcony as the manager of the team because this is something very dear to me. Uh, the sport, because that's, uh, that's what made me, that's what have me where I am today, that gave me everything that I have. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's a very, very good feeling. I, I, I was just waiting on the moment, I waited on the moment when we would have international cricket in Grenada. Uh, cricket West Indies, you know, have a lot of credit to take for that, and also the government of Grenada and Grenada Cricket Association, and everyone. So now it's left to us to, to just put everything together so we could have, we could continue to have cricket. 
because I'm sure I think Dom could probably explain this a little bit better that uh, now you could know how many matches you'd have up until 2023 or something like that without bidding for it. So, you know, once cricket start playing in Grenada, we just have to keep improving in, in every area, personnel, everything. Sports Minister Senator Nolan Cox responded to concerns about the malfunctioning of the electronic scoreboard at the cricket stadium. He says government, through the Ministry of Sports, has already looked at it as one of the critical components of hosting the games and plans are in motion to address the problem. As recent as this week, we had uh, our partners, uh, development partners, uh, 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 technicians uh, from the People's Republic of China uh, were towed the, the facility uh, with a view of assisting us in terms of repairing um, whatever issues that we have and in terms of the aestheticness, um, seats, whatever challenges that we have, technical and otherwise, to have that ready for uh, 2019 games. And one such is the scoreboard. Um, we have not had a feedback from them as yet as to um, how we're going to address that. But we have discussed as a ministry alternative um, approaches to addressing that. Um, as you may know, there are several uh, service pro providers in Grenada who have uh, digital screens and they can perform uh, that task as, as well. Uh, so we have already uh, contacted them, prompt them to let them know that there is a strong likelihood that we will be looking uh, towards them to provide in service, not just for the scoreboard, but also for the replay screen as well. Ambassador Joel Garner, a former West Indies bowler, spoke to the issue of uh, the performance of the present West Indies cricketers. He says they possess the ability, but there is need for them to work harder to get results. If you don't put any effort, you're not going to get results. And like I said to Dominic last night, if you don't prepare well, you prepare to fail. And most of the problems that we will have is because limited ability can only take you so far. If you don't make the necessary sacrifices to get to the level that you want, you will never get there. When you go back to the time when we were playing, you had any one of 15 fast bowlers vying for four places. You had to be at the top of the game. Not only that you had to be at the top of the game, but you had to keep fit and keep performing because when you feel the next fellow who's going to take your place, <laughs> you're not sure when you're going to get back. So, you, you know, it, it is not easy. It is not going to be easy to get back where we were, but then attitudes will have to change as well. A local organizing committee will be put in place to ensure all is ready for the successful staging of the Games. This is the National Report. More news after the break. The house was shaking, shaking. Then said the story we here, babe. Crack, 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 crack. And the roof had gone. Man, I was so scared, I nearly wet myself. Only those who have lived it can truly understand the devastating fury of a hurricane's wind. The house across the road just get up and roll over. Hurricane force wind. It's a hazard. Hazards. Take control. Reduce your loss. You can hurricane-proof your home. For example, make your roof more wind-resistant by using screws instead of nails in its construction. Find out more about hurricane force winds and other hazards at your local disaster office. A message from the National Disaster Management Agency and Sidera. Welcome back with the National Report. After a nine-year absence, the prominent Grenadian cultural feature is making a comeback. The Ministry of Culture reintroduced the Festival of the Arts during a press conference on Tuesday. Registration runs from October 1st to the 19th, while the preliminaries will take place from October 26th to November 9th. The semi-finals are carded for November 26th to the 30th and the final on December 6th. Deputy Chief Cultural Officer Suzanne Jones Benjamin says the festival has been the platform for several successful cultural icons in Grenada and is therefore an integral component of the Ministry of Culture and its development to the cultural product. She outlined some of the reasons for the festival's nine-year break. We are very short staff 
um, personal resource, financial resource, and um, that is what the long years, the long break. But we're happy that this year we are able to bring in persons from the ministry, and we have had other divisions like the Arts Council have come on board because we do not have any right now in the department who can uh, um, judge art art pieces. <laughs> we are very limited in that regard. We don't ever have anybody in theatre. Mr. Sabina Vincent is from St. Joseph Conrad. Grenville. So we have uh, collaborated with these persons to ensure that Arts Festival is a success this year. Culture Minister Senator Nolan Cox says that there are many talents that need exposure and his ministry is ensuring that they will be given the opportunity and support. This the greater festival of the arts to be reintroduced for 20. We believe that every Grenadian have an opportunity to display who they are, who we are as Grenadians, and to ensure that every aspect of our culture is displayed throughout the world. I encourage you to participate and support the Greater Festival of the Arts by becoming a sponsor, a participant, an adjudicator, a coach, or just being in the audience to witness our preliminaries and our finals as we endeavor to host the 2018 Festival of the Arts. And that's a wrap for the National Report for today, Tuesday, September 11th, 2018. On behalf of all of us in the newsroom, I am Wendy Edmund, thanking you for viewing.